2019. Uh, the purpose of this was, as law enforcement, we practiced shutting down the active shooters and drill that, but we never really thought about putting the whole big picture together. This is, isn't something that just law enforcement can do, it takes the whole community. So uh, there's a video, if you guys haven't seen it, we can play it at the next one, or I can give it to you guys, it's on YouTube, it actually, it got us thinking about that. There is so much happens after the shooting, and we need to be prepared for that. It's something we gotta have drilled, people assigned and ready to go, and not try and put together the day of the incident. So that's the purpose of this, this group, and it worked good back then. We started out like we are today, just kind of a face-to-face -face meeting, talked about the groups, and then we would meet again, and each group meet individually on what their responsibilities are. So I'll, I'll talk a little more about that after we get the introduction. So I'll talk to you on this part. I'm Richard Murray, I'll be the school district. After that initial calls come in, the officers are dispatched. Then the on-duty line of PD officers, Otero County Sheriff's officers and state patrol uh, troopers will respond to the shooting to shut it down. All other uh, law enforcement coming from all around, because calls are coming out you know, as far as Pueblo, Bend County, they're gonna respond to a law enforcement staging area. The purpose of that is not having law enforcement overwhelm the scene, block the entrances in for, for EMS, uh, things we need to get in there. Uh, at the staging area for law enforcement, they will uh, start uh, assigning people where they're needed through communications with radios. Uh, so, so far our uh, staging area people are Scott Copley, former major, Colorado State Patrol, uh, Paul Velasquez, uh, Master Trooper, former Master Trooper, Colorado State Patrol, and Mike Steeds, Law and Police Department, Law and IT, U.S. Air Force. So we got some people with some experience there and they'll be getting the people checked in and then where they need to go. Uh, fire and amp staging will be set up. Chief Davidson will be handling that. Same thing with them. People are coming in, they're gonna have to get ambulances up there, so he'll, he'll be directing that or whoever he puts in, in charge for him because he may be in the incident command. Um, on scene, we'll set up a tactical command post. That's the first ones uh, responding. The way we train now is the first one or two officers go on scene immediately go in. We don't wait. We go in, try to find the shooter and shut it down. So eventually we'll have to get somebody there in tactical command to, to uh, keep, keep things going and keep track of things. And then uh, Mike Ingebret and I would, will be notified if we don't already know of what's going on. And then what the Code Red also initiates is LED staging I talked about, fire I talked about, uh, Arkansas Valley Regional Medical Center, anybody here from there? Leroy, thought he was coming. So anyway, they lock down the hospital and start getting ready to take patients in. Part of law enforcement staging will be to get some security you know, over to them as they come in. Uh, the city crews, which I hope to get CDOT in with, they get a loose perimeter because we don't want you guys to get in any shootings, any danger to get a loose uh, containment and then start setting up roadblocks and everything and the route get the route cleared and the route set up for the school buses to take the kids to their from the school to the reunification area so that's that's going to be you guys primary responsibility uh, the sheriff's office posse has in the past and I hope they still will will go to the reunification area immediately secure a perimeter on it and then clear the which is the OJC gym They'll get that cleared, make sure there's no setup booby traps or anything, people waiting in there to cause more harm. Get that cleared and get ready to start receiving the kids. Uh, Tracy Nilsson, uh, he's very versed in incident command. He's been what, all over the United States doing stuff, at least Colorado. So him and Danny Chavez, who's the emergency manager uh, for Otero County, will get incident command being set up. So you, you see a lot of these parts. Uh, district, uh, school district, transportation, we'll start getting the buses ready and then get to the staging areas for them, whether it's at the high school, so say it's at the high school, you guys will more than likely start staging on 22nd Street uh, and down a ways away from it. Um, once it's secure, CBI and the DA start responding to the scene, <coughs> you know, to help with the investigation after everything is shut down. I did have CBN, but I invited, they didn't make it. I'm going to say Mr. Fraker is the representative for the DA today as well as the college. So they start helping what we needed to get done to, uh, to get this investigation going. 
This is going to be a long investigation. Which building's affected? We'll put that specific building into lockdown. The other two or three will go into secure mode. Um, obviously, the affected building is going to have more of the attention, but then the other building will eventually work on uh, releasing kids from those sites, depending on what kind of threat we have and how close it is to those schools. But traditionally, we will release from those schools, have parents come pick them up. Uh, we probably won't run buses because buses are going to be tied up on the main incident situation, so parents will be required to pick kids up at the other locations. Uh, we'll put out a phone call district-wide, basically advising of the situation which schools affected. Uh, we'll have information for parents to not go to the affected site, don't go to the college until we say it's good and ready. We'll put out information of what they need to know as far as having their IDs, whatever they need uh, to have with them for the reunification site in order to pick up their kids. So we'll do that via our all-call system. We'll also probably do that in conjunction with the press release with the police department and get it out that way. Can you talk just briefly about standard response protocol? Uh, standard response protocol, we follow that district-wide. We have been for the last, I don't know, 10, 12 years. Uh, we re-up it every year with our staff and students. Uh, depending on whether it's a lockdown, a secure, an evacuate, a shelter. So that's practiced every every year. Everybody's pretty well versed on that and kind of familiar with that. But what we do with that kind of coincides with what we will all do should we have a situation. So it, it all kind of just ties in together. I covered enough.